The episode begins with Billy and his sister catching glowing butterflies in the forest. Billy traps a butterfly in a jar, but his sister tells him that it needs holes or the butterfly will die. Billy goes off to gather more, but suddenly, he sees Boyd, who has transformed after escaping from Derek and Scott. Billy and his sister run through the forest and find a house to hide in, but Boyd arrives and lifts the entire house off them. They scream, and the girl drops the jar of butterflies, which fly out and distract Boyd, allowing Billy and his sister to escape. At the same time, we see Lydia waking up from a nightmare, screaming and looking for a sedative, but she finds it's all gone. She tells her mother that she's going out to buy something. We see Lydia getting out of her car, but she finds herself at a swimming pool instead of the supermarket she was heading to. Lydia notices a body in the water, approaches to see what it is, but it turns out to be a human-shaped float. Just as she turns to leave, she sees the lifeguard murdered, sitting in his chair. At the same time, Allison is recalling Scott telling her that her mother had tried to kill him. She asks him why he didn't tell her before, and Scott explains that he didn't want her memories of her mother to change, which is why he kept it from her. We see two girls, Caitlin and Emily, camping in the forest together. Emily finds insects in the tent and screams, running out. Caitlin goes out to search for her but can't see her in the dark. Emily is on the ground with many insects crawling over her. Caitlin continues searching for Emily in the forest and encounters Derek's sister, Cora, in a transformed state, who attacks her. Isaac arrives to save Caitlin and fights Cora. Scott arrives just in time and tells Caitlin to run away. Meanwhile, Stiles has arrived to meet Lydia after she called him about the body she found. He takes out his phone to call the police, but Lydia tells him she already did. Stiles responds that she should have called him first before the police. Stiles calls Scott to inform him about the body they found. Scott asks him to check if the lifeguard was killed in a way that suggests it was done by a supernatural being or otherwise. Derek asks Scott how they managed to get across the forest so quickly. Scott realizes that the situation is different from what they initially thought and that they need help from someone with more experience. Officer Noah is questioning Caitlin, who describes the transformed beings and how her friend went missing. The officer tells his assistant to issue a bulletin with Emily's description. The assistant is skeptical, suggesting that Caitlin might be on something, but Officer Noah insists that she saw something real. Chris arrives to meet Scott after Scott called him. Derek and Isaac are sitting in the car, watching the interaction between Chris and Scott. Scott asks Chris for his help, but Chris refuses, stating that he saw his father brainwashing his daughter and how he was turning her into a criminal. Chris wants to stay away from this life for his daughter's sake. Scott argues that people are dying and that Chris is the only one who knows how to hunt the supernatural beings and must help them. Chris remains firm in his refusal. Scott then asks Chris to at least drive him to the forest before leaving. Chris agrees and drives him. Upon arriving, Scott sees Caitlin being taken to the hospital by ambulance and feels responsible. He asks Chris if Boyd and Cora were responsible for the attack. Scott confirms, and Chris finally agrees to help them. Chris goes with Scott, Derek, and Isaac to the location where the transformed beings were last seen. He tells them that following their trail from the last known spot is a mistake because the tracks can overlap and create confusion. The key to hunting the transformed is to rely on their enhanced sense of smell. Meanwhile, Allison cuts her hand to let a drop of blood fall, hoping Boyd will smell it and come to her. Chris asks Derek when he last saw his sister. Derek replies that it was nine years ago during the fire. Chris then asks if he can recognize her scent, but Derek says it's difficult. Chris explains that Boyd and Cora kill for pleasure, not hunger, which is problematic because they won't stop killing. He thinks about a place that is enclosed and has no windows or glass where they can trap them. Scott suggests the school, which is empty at night, and mentions that the storage room for school supplies has no windows. If they can get Boyd and Cora there, they might be able to trap them. However, the school is still operational at this time. Chris pulls out some devices, explaining that they emit ultrasonic waves that only the transformed can hear, which can be used to guide them to the desired location. He hands out two devices to each of them, and they begin distributing them throughout the forest. At the same time, Stiles takes Lydia home, and she tells him that she knows he wants to ask her something. Stiles asks why she ended up at the pool. Lydia replies that she doesn't know. Stiles asks if she remembers the last time something like this happened and Lydia says yes, it was because of Peter. We see Peter talking to Derek, informing him that Deucalion, the Alpha Pack leader, wants Derek to kill his sister Cora and his team to join him. Peter suggests letting Scott handle the situation while they watch from afar. Stiles goes to the hospital to see Melissa, Scott's mother. She tells him she wants to show him something but not to tell anyone she let him in. She shows him the lifeguard's body, 
noting that he was killed in multiple ways, strangled and hit on the head, indicating human methods, not those of the transformed. She also mentions that a girl was killed in the same way, which is even more unusual. Scott and Isaac open the school doors, and Chris notices the glowing butterflies, commenting to Scott that something strange is happening because those butterflies are not native to their area. They hear Boyd and Cora but see them running across the roof instead of entering as planned. Melissa shows Styles the second body, which turns out to be his missing friend Heather, who disappeared on her birthday. Styles is deeply affected, and Melissa asks if he knew her. He explains that their mothers were friends and that he was with Heather the day she disappeared. Melissa tells him he needs to inform his father because he is now a witness. Styles starts thinking about the recent murders and asks Melissa if there are any other cases. She tells him about the girl from the forest whose friend is still missing, and Styles requests to meet her. Back at the school, Chris says they need to open the door to let Boyd and Cora in. Isaac suggests that he can run quickly to lure them inside and shut the door behind them. Isaac positions himself by the door, and as Boyd and Cora approach, Allison stands on top of the bus, shooting arrows to drive them inside. Once they enter, Isaac shuts the door behind them. Using the ultrasonic devices, they lure Boyd and Cora into the storage room and lock them inside. However, as they start to calm down, Scott hears three heartbeats instead of two, realizing there is a third person in the storage room. Styles meets Caitlin and asks about what happened to her and Emily. Caitlin explains that she camps there often and nothing like this has ever happened before. Derek decides to enter the school to save it from Boyd and Cora. He tells Scott to lock the door behind him once he's inside. The school hears the sounds of the transformed beings, and Derek confronts them in a fierce battle. Isaac sees the sun rising and shouts to Scott. They open the door to find Derek severely injured with Boyd and Cora lying on the ground. Derek tells them there's a student inside, and he goes to get her out. Scott goes to the hospital to meet Stiles, who explains what he has discovered. Stiles is certain they will find Emily killed in the same manner. Officer Noah finds Emily's body in the forest, killed in the same way as Heather and the lifeguard. Styles tells Scott about a ritual performed by monks in a strange religion, requiring specific human sacrifices to gain desired abilities. These sacrifices involve three specific methods of killing, which matches the pattern of the murders they have found. A man is getting his dog treated by Dr. Deaton. Scott takes a sample from the dog for analysis, and after finishing, the man takes his dog outside to his car. However, the dog runs off into a side street. Scott is analyzing the sample and finds pollen. He asks Dr. Deaton about it, and Deaton explains that it's something potent enough to kill not just dogs but humans as well. The dog's owner searches for his pet and hears a noise under a trash can. As he investigates, he gets bitten. He assumes it was his dog, but then he sees the dog standing at a distance. When he checks again, he hears a voice calling him closer, and unfortunately, he disappears. Scott exits the clinic and finds the dog alone, searching for its owner, but he is nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, Derek visits the teacher Jennifer, who is frightened and asks if he's there to kill her. She grabs a stick to defend herself, but Derek assures her he's there to check on her well-being. As he leaves, she calls out, asking who he is. He replies, Derek, and she introduces herself as Jennifer. The next day, Isaac arrives at school late and prepares for practice. He feels uneasy around the twin brothers and mentions this to Scott. During the run, Isaac tells Scott that the twins are the ones who attacked him. Isaac chases after them but loses sight of them, and when he stops, the twins appear and beat him up. Scott intervenes, helping Isaac fight them off. They hear students screaming and rush to see what happened, finding the dog owner dead and tied to a tree. Officer Noah arrives to investigate the crime. Scott sees the twins and asserts they were surprised by the body like everyone else, but Isaac remains suspicious, insisting they killed the girl who saved him. At Derek's house, Cora is training with him when the red light warning activates signaling the arrival of the Alpha Pack. Kali, a member of the Alpha Pack, enters and fights Derek, impaling him with a metal rod to pin him down. Meanwhile, at school, Allison is in her French class, dozing off. The teacher, who is also the school counselor, wakes her up and suggests she might need a session at the counseling office. Allison retorts, asking what she was doing at the bank, and the teacher says she has an appointment after school. In chemistry class, Scott and Isaac discuss giving the twins a chance to reveal their intentions. Isaac disagrees and asks the teacher to go to the restroom, but Scott's request to leave is denied. Isaac witnesses one twin brutally beating the other and throwing him at Isaac's feet. The teacher hears the noise and exits to find Isaac, assuming he was the one who attacked the twin. Derek, still pinned by Kali, listens as do Kali and apologizes for what happened to him. Stiles goes to the station to talk to his father, 
trying to get more information about the boy found in the forest to confirm his theory about ritual sacrifices. Cora asks Kali if she plans to kill Derek, but Kali says no. Derek asks Dukalian if he wants him to kill one of his pack members, but Dukalian replies that he wants Derek to kill them all. The chemistry teacher assigns Isaac and Allison to organize the storage room as part of their detention. Allison asks Isaac if he told anyone she was involved in trapping Boyd and Cora, and he assures her he didn't. She apologizes for previously shooting him with her arrows. Suddenly, the door shuts on Isaac and Allison, and Isaac starts to panic because he has claustrophobia from when his father used to lock him in the freezer. He begins to freak out and pound on the door. Allison tries to calm him down, but Isaac transforms and scratches her arm. At that moment, Scott breaks down the door, gets them out, and calms Isaac down. Isaac apologizes for what he did to Allison, but Scott understands that he didn't mean it and tells him that the twins don't just want to upset him, they want to hurt him. Stiles talks to Lydia, explaining his theory about human sacrifices. He tells her that there's a religion that sacrifices an infant every day. Lydia asks why he's telling her this, and he responds that it's because Scott is focused on the twins. Lydia starts to think because she used to have a crush on one of them. Stiles asks if she knows Ethan and Aiden, but Lydia tells him that it's not his job and he should let his dad handle it. Scott and Isaac start to retaliate against the twins. Allison unlocks Isaac's motorcycle, which he rides into the school. Scott takes the lock and enters the classroom where the twins are. He shows them the lock, causing Aiden to freak out and go to check on his motorcycle. He finds Isaac riding it and tells him to get off. Isaac doesn't walks away. The teacher comes out and sees Aiden on the motorcycle inside the school. Meanwhile, Derek is resisting death. Dukalian tells him that the stronger the individuals, the stronger the pack becomes. He explains that after losing his sight, one of his pack members tried to take his place, so he had to kill him. This made him realize that every time he kills a member of his pack, their strength is added to his. Dukalian wants Derek to give himself a chance to know him like his sister did and points out that he knows nothing about him. Suddenly, the Alpha with Dukalian gets scared, and Dukalian declares that he's the demon wolf. Kali then removes the rod from Derek, and they leave. At the same time, Lydia is sitting and sketching. Danny tells her she's really good at drawing and should join the art class instead of music class. Lydia looks around and realizes she's in the music room without remembering how she got there. She sees a phone recording on the piano, plays the recording, and hears music at first, then strange and frightening sounds. Stiles is sitting with Dr. Deaton, explaining all his suspicions. Dr. Deaton tells him that some time ago, they found someone who died 2000 years ago in the same manner as the recent murders. He explains that someone is trying to imitate the rituals of an ancient religion and that the person doing this was an outcast demonic priest. Stiles' phone rings, and it's Lydia, who tells him that the school's piano player was killed. Stiles asks if he was killed or just disappeared, and Lydia confirms he was killed because there's blood on the piano. Dr. Deaton asks Lydia to send him the recording. Stiles finds a link between the murders. The dog owner's friend Boyd was in the military class, and the piano player was also in the military class. Lydia points out that there's another person in the military class, the chemistry teacher. At that moment, the chemistry teacher is in his office working and hears the same sound from the recording. Isaac is with Scott, discussing how annoyed the twins were. Suddenly, they see the twins ahead of them, who merge to form the giant Alpha. Scott and Isaac start running, but the giant Alpha catches up and grabs them both. Deucalion enters, and the twins separate. Deucalion scratches the twins with a small blade from his cane and leaves. Scott and Isaac go to the teacher's office but don't find him. They see papers on his desk, each with a letter written in red. When they arrange them, they spell out Derek, the demonic druid styles mentioned. Isaac goes back to Derek's place to sleep but finds Derek has packed his bag and tells him he needs to leave immediately. Isaac thinks Derek is joking, but Derek is serious. Isaac tries to find out why Derek wants him to leave, and Derek coldly tells him that his sister is with him and he doesn't need anyone else, eventually pushing Isaac out. Scott is in his room when there's a knock on the door. Thinking it's his mom, he opens it to find Isaac, who asks if he can stay with him after being kicked out by Derek. In the final scene, we see the chemistry teacher tied up in the woods, begging someone to let him go. He says he did everything they asked and still needs to complete something, but the person doesn't listen and kills him in the same manner as the previous victims. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.